Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it really is a pleasure to be here. And uh, I really want to thank the organizers. And True Health uh, is really uh, an aspirational target for us all. And I'm so glad that uh, you're all here and participating in this. Uh, there's nothing better that we could be doing with our time that I feel than trying to figure out the health care crisis that we have. Uh, in the United States. And so I'm going to talk uh, a lot of, you know, it's very selective information, really going to focus on cardiovascular disease because I think that's where our, our, um, our attention ought to be drawn. And it's not just the United States. It really is a global problem. It's, uh, as uh, those of you who were here last night, we had a lot of discussion about a lot of things I'm going to talk about, so it might be a little repetition, but here's some of the facts, you know, that we really have uh, so many, it's the number one cause of death globally, and over three quarters of those deaths actually take place in low and middle income countries. Unlike uh, in the past where uh, it was really infectious disease and, and the like, uh, this is a burden for many, many places in, the, in this world. In the United States, uh, it's really one out of every three deaths. It's, uh, that was a wonderful introduction, you know, that, uh, uh, that we heard and how many people died in the United States just during the introduction or, and every few slides. It's going to happen again. And when are we going to do something about it? So I'm, I'm really glad you're here. Um, we Actually, I want to back up and make one more point on that slide. If you look at the bottom of it, that's a, a shocking statistics uh, that, we, uh, that we really need to focus on. Not too many African Americans in the room. Is there more than, is there more than one? This, oh, oh, there you are. <laughs> okay, okay, there we go. Well, I mean, we, we really struggle with this. Uh, to have the almost 50% of African American women uh, and close to that for men having some form of cardiovascular disease, albeit a lot of hypertension, that is cardiovascular disease. And so we need to try to focus on this because it's a dramatic amount of um, morbidity, mortality, and uh, health care costs, if nothing else, and how, and, but the human cost is even greater. Now, um, I usually like to do a, a little audience analysis here just to, just to uh, get everyone, and I, I probably don't need to do that in this. I, I finally learned my lesson. If I come to a, a, a plant-based nutrition, health care-oriented uh, set of people, it goes pretty well. So I'm just going to skip to the bottom. Okay. <coughs> How many of us in the room exercise every day for at least 30 minutes, have a body mass index less than 25, have your LDL cholesterol less than 100, never smoke, eat a vegan diet, heart healthy diet, uh, which is plant based, uh, have a blood pressure less than 120, uh, and know that their blood sugar is normal? How many? Have all seven. So that's pretty darn good, okay? Um, around the country, if you do this to children, we're talking about 3%. Uh, it's probably closer to 1% of adults. And, and when I'm doing this in a general audience, and I, or you know, I, I do this a lot in universities and hospitals, and it typically is about 1%. Um, the rest of us are really struggling. Now, I did mention last night, for those of you who are here, how proud we tend to be in, you know, in cardiology because we've been the leading cause of death since 1918, but we are fighting it. And um, up there, if you're in the front, you can actually see all of the developments. Uh, and, you know, you can sort of argue which ones uh, are the most impactful. Is it bypass surgery? Is it statin drugs? What is it that actually has lowered cardiovascular mortality so much in this country? Uh, over the last uh, uh, 40 years or so. Um, but uh, I sort of stole this from Dean Ornish. I don't know where Dean got it from, but it's so true that all we're doing with all of our stents and bypasses and medications and you know, vasodilators from heart failure, defibrillators, you name it, all we're doing is mopping up the floor. We're not stopping the disease. We're keeping people who are diseased uh, alive longer, doing better. And that can't be our ultimate goal. Uh, because if it is, this is going to happen. So this did happen. Um, this is the 2015 data from uh, the CDC saying that heart disease uh, mortality actually went up. And I'm waiting to see the 2016 data. I suspect the same thing is happening. 
is the CDC says it's the obesity epidemic with diabetes that's driving this. Now, you could argue that, you know, if we do all these fancy things to uh, increase life expectancy in cardiovascular disease, which we have, that they're going to die sooner or later, so the curve is going to catch up at some point. Uh, so maybe it, it really is three different factors, but um, this part we could do something about, okay? Um, I'm looking around the room. I only see a few of us who remember those little burgers, okay? Uh, the, the rest of you grew up with those big, gigantic things, and uh, the, the calories uh, in our meals and in our meal choices has led to this obesity epidemic. And so it's a gr I always say it's a growing problem, and I know that's a pun, but it, um, it really is um, something that you would think it would be a, a good thing for societies to be so developed that we have palatable and affordable foods uh, that we don't have to go out in the field and work, uh, you know, picking cotton and all the stuff that we used to do um, because we've gotten slicker and we now have jobs that have computers and we can be uh, much more productive. Uh, however, that has a bit of a toll. We have more screen time, uh, and we get programmed from an early age to want sweets and fat and fried, and we are inundated with this with television commercials and everything else that um, points us uh, with our restaurant choices. And you know, we, we, are, we talk about how bad the food is in restaurants and hospitals, but do we ever stop to think about what's driving that? It did come out last night. It's consumer choices. And so the pushback when I was at University of Chicago on the faculty and I gave them loads of data on plant-based nutrition and it was being flatly rejected, uh, it was because they were worried about their press gainy scores, that is, the patient satisfaction. And so you really do have to change this uh, from the bottom up. And if we do that, uh, the hospitals and the restaurants will follow. So we have this epidemic, 78 million uh, adults and 13 million children. Uh, it's very difficult to go out and find healthy meals. It's very difficult to get uh, folks to eat fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts. Um, it's just not what we do. And it's get difficult to get people to understand the basics of weight gain which is actually pretty cleverly uh, shown on this slide by Juliana Heaver. She's uh, in Southern California, a dietitian, um, media person. And that whole idea that the fat you eat is the fat you wear, part of it is the intense calories and just a small amount of volume. That's 400 calories there. If you replace the oil with an animal product, you end up with, uh, oh, you've covered a little bit of space, but you're still hungry and you're still eating. Whereas a whole food plant-based diet will give you a, a reasonable amount of calories, fill your stomach, you get the satiety, and you don't feel like you have to keep eating. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. A lot of folks talk about uh, the blue zones. Uh, one that wasn't included in that uh, because it was a population probably that most people had not seen before. But I like this because it's a, a good uh, modern assessment and the folks who did it are friends of mine. So uh, for those of you who are geographically challenged, like most of us, that is Bolivia, <laughs> okay? And um, this was actually in The Lancet. Uh, we like to think that that's a uh, vegan propaganda journal, but no, it's The Lancet. It's a very uh, uh, high-ranking um, peer-reviewed uh, journal. And they talked about, uh, and they is uh, the Horus group. Horus, if you haven't heard of them, you probably actually have. Um, but you may not have known, known about it, but they are the people who have gone around. Uh, some of them are really good friends of mine, Sam Wan, Greg Thomas, uh, Randy Thompson, their names are up there. What they do is they go around doing CT scans on mummies, looking for cardiovascular disease on people who were long deceased. And they've found so many, I, you know, you'd have to Google it to, to, to try to capture all of the uh, insights that they've gained. But one of the, someone in the group decided, well, why don't we do some living people? <laughs> and um, they actually uh, drove, got the equipment into uh, Bolivia, but they couldn't get that close to this very remote area. They had to actually drive the people back and forth uh, for about six hours in order to get these CT scans, but they did them. And um, you have a, a people who are living remotely uh, in a very um, you know, rural, uh, to say the least, society, they are mostly plant-based, and that's what ca captured their interest. Um, and uh, they have uh, a very low incidence of obesity, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol. 
Um, and interestingly enough, at the bottom there, you see that they do have some problems of a, of a, of a remote uh, rural society, and that is a whole lot of uh, inflammatory conditions, and that's mostly because of all the parasites. So sorry if you're squeamish about worms and parasites, but uh, that's what they have. Now, now, I'll be talking a little bit later about the interaction between cholesterol and inflammation. Um, but here the folks have inflammation, they don't have as much cholesterol, and in summary, they have a very low amount of cardiovascular disease, a very low amount of coronary artery calcium, uh, the scores are very low, and uh, only uh, a tiny portion of them actually had uh, the score that we would worry about, you know, more than 100. And if you were to translate that to the U.S. population, uh, those, the scores that they have correlate with being about 28 years younger than they actually are, the so-called vascular age. And so we can learn a lot from that. I mean, what do they do? They eat, eat animals when they catch something, and of course, since they're not raising them full time, uh, they're not domesticated, they're not fatty animals, uh, animals nonetheless, but they're relatively rare. They're growing their plants, and um, they're chasing after things, and, and they are uh, not a lot of obesity because they're working all the time. So that's a lesson for all of us, that um, more plants, uh, more work, uh, less health care costs and concerns. Mm -hmm.